On this week's episode of the podcast, we're celebrating one year of podcasting. And so we decided to show you some of the best moments from the last year. We also have a 15 minute conversation at the end of this episode, but I'd advise you go through all the best moments and relive everything from the last year. I think you'll enjoy it. They're the best parts, so they're funny. Okay. Thanks for your support, everyone. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to episode one of Two Pals on a Pod with me, Ed Chapman, and my co-host, Toby. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm, I've been looking forward to this. Lots of anticipation around it now. I know. We're here. Finally, the, the show's been launched. Are you pro or against hitting kids? <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with the big questions. I am against it. You're against um, it. A little clip around there. It's a little smack. Get in line. Bang. Out I it. think you could. It's okay to boot them, but don't slap them. <laughs> um, <laughs> boot them. <laughs> How hmm. do you crash into an iceberg? Just look out the window. Oh, it's there. Turn left. Just went to the toilets with a pint glass, pissed in it, and poured it over my poor fresher mate's head for oh. no reason. Is the rumour about you having one testicle genuine? Is it true? Is it not true? Whip them out, maybe, as part of the entertainment. (laughs) We'll just sidle off to the toilets together just to inspect (laughs) his balls. Come here, Adolf. Come on. It's about time we knew. Was it in the Albert Hall after all? (laughs) Anyway, eventually, after about five or ten minutes, he then went, first of all, any coke, mate? I was like, nah, I'm good, thanks. I am good. I am high on life, mate. Cheers, though. Would you ever sell pictures uh, of your chest or feet or any nude related imagery would you ever do that i'd like to say that i think that if you're single i think i'd totally go for it and obviously there was a bit of drama in our family group chat last christmas no the parents weren't, weren't sending them to you were they no <laughs> <laughs> wrong group chat. absolutely absolutely finger slipped finger slipped he's allergic to nuts and for some insane <laughs> reason he's gone to an orgy there's nuts everywhere me and my housemate last year were watching what we're we watching Breakfast Club. So I sat down watching with my with my housemate, and we hear a smash, boof, glass gone Ooh. through. Hmm, interesting. It's not ours. So we limber to the back, came from the back of the house. Limber, limber. The back, nothing there. And then we hear a scream. Oof. Oh, me from a few doors down. All the neighbours are out. We're like, what's what's going on here? What's going on here? Nobody knows. So we go out the front. It's all kicking off. All kicking off. Basically, what happened was two doors down, her ex boyfriend. Had been released from a mental asylum on that day. The first place he'd gone was to her house, oh. broken in, absolutely terrorizing her. We're knocking on the front door. Let me in, let me in. Is everything okay? What's going on in there? She opens the door, like something out of a horror movie it was. Blood all over the walls. He's in there, been smashing stuff up, basically. Um, and he's done a runner. So, what we heard when we had the smash when watching the movie was him doing the runner out the back. But right. for some reason, didn't go the conventional route through the back door that they had. Decided, hero's exit, straight through the window. What? Out the window. Like, straight, I don't know why. What, know head why, first through the window? That's what it looked like. That's what it looked like, like straight through the window. Just I don't know why. Just the door. Gone, bam. Off the scene. She's there. Police on the scene. He appears at the bottom of the street again. Everybody starts screaming. Oh, God. And he delivers what I could only describe as some kind of, like, monologue so he appears at the bottom of the street with his hands behind his head as if the police have guns and they're going to shoot him what his hands he gets on his up. knees his hands are up as if you know like is it like this was his moment his kind of superhero moment oh, or whatever God. villain i've been caught gets on his knees and then gets into this monologue about how basically she cheated on him or whatever blah 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 uh police are doing nothing they're just there watching but with the blue lights everywhere and him doing this and the tape was out and everything, I don't know what they were thinking, whether they were thinking he's going to just talk and talk and talk and then hand himself over or whatever. But they were at the top of the street, he was at the bottom, and they were just letting him have this kind of monologue or whatever about the nature of his and her relationship and whatnot. But basically, um, he was saying, um, I'm, a, I'm a local, she's a student, it was never going to work, as if they were Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> oh, he's just um, externalising his sort of thoughts, isn't he? This point. It's more, he was a psychopath and she was unknowing. That's why it didn't work, I think. You know, right. they were breaking in and the mental asylum. Is, it does kind of get in the way, I think. She was a girl. I was a <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, the line, the line that really stuck uh, with me, it's one of his, one of his last lines. It, it was almost, it was that good. It was almost rehearsed, this monologue. And he goes, he said her name and he's like, I put a roof over your head and a cock up your ass. <laughs> and this is how you... <laughs> And this is how you repay me. This is how you repay me. Oh, no, you can't say that. Um, 
god, then, that's ridiculous. I'm gonna eat a and then proceeds, proceeds to st- <laughs> proceeds to stroll up the street with his arms still above his head to show that he was unarmed. Obviously, oh. gets in the back of the police van and they take him away. But that's the closest we come to a break in. I and I tell you what, that. still to this day. And I'd be very, very angry if anybody ruined the end of the movie for me because I still haven't seen how Breakfast Club finishes. <laughs> this doctor has made a preliminary diagnosis. So I'm thinking, oh, thank God, they can medicate against it or whatever. And I Google it. And the first thing that I see is um, typically from the onset of the diagnosis, people with this disorder live for five years max. What? And my ass fell out. But my mum Googles him and he'd been struck off before. Get this for manslaughter. So what happened in the early noughties? Oh, been really struck off been naughty. He... <laughs> have I ever told you about the time when we had a funeral for a hamster? Parents went to a funeral a couple years ago where they didn't dig the hole for the grave large enough oh, and didn't realise no. the coffin was just going banging from side to side because it couldn't fit down the, oh, the actual no. hole. If you can't love me despite my tiny penis, then is, can you really love me at all? Do you have know you said I mean? that to people um, before? Oh, no, that's, no, it's not something that's actually rehearsed. rolls off the tongue. Yeah. You know, but, suffocation via the buttocks. You know, some people are into that and that kind of stuff. That might happen. What's, uh, what's suffocation via the buttocks? What's that? Is that just, just being a... sat on, being crushed. <laughs> if you're going to be a creep, don't be a creep at Christmas, you dirty little perv. What on earth <laughs> are you talking about? Don't talk rubbish. Crystals free the nipple. I think it's important that we do not ban female body parts. As a feminist, I think it's As important. As a pervert? No. I've never particularly liked strip clubs. I don't think it's cheating. I just don't think they're very good. In the future, men are going to turn into women or something. We're going to have breasts. The Queen, has she got a sniper rifle on a roof well, I mean, somewhere? What's going on? <laughs> queen doesn't have it in her, does she? She jumped out of a do. helicopter with James Bond at the Olympics. <laughs> She's got previous, is all I'm saying. Apparently, Camilla, great in bed, according to this royal expert. What's your thoughts? Fateful night in, in, in Paris. Yeah. Paris, yeah. City of love. He was rushing through the Paris mean? night. They hounded you, <laughs> you lost control. I think I've been shat on by a bird once. All right, go on then. Let's let's role play it. I'm a baby. (laughs) This is taking a turn. Go on, on, I'm a baby. (laughs) Is she floral? Is she spicy? I'm thinking, (laughs) oh, I'm not going to describe my own mum as spicy. (laughs) What are you talking about? Spicy? Have you seen pictures of Jeffrey Epstein's body? Like when they do the autopsy, have you actually seen pictures of it? I haven't known. He wasn't the most attractive man when he was alive, so I imagine when he was dead. Yeah, not a looker when he was dead, to be honest. I remember my mum having to, at Manchester Airport, having to... um... Take the bomb off her. (laughs) (laughs) Take the vest off, mum. Come on. on. Put it in the bin. She's left it on again. She's left oh, it on again. You went doing? to take that off. Take that C4 off. We were in, we were in bed. He says to me, and he goes, I love you. And my first thought was, and I, I can't say it back, so I paused for about five seconds. The best, the, the best that my brain could do in this scenario was, that's nice. <laughs> oh, that was brutal. Would you get pregnant if you could? The mini Let's table get it is... on. Oh, oh, baby. <laughs> baby. Let's get it on. We're on the mattress. What's eating. That? I once accidentally terrorized the local Tesco's when the horse I was riding gallops inside after a customer's dog. <laughs> I'm on top of him. Of course you are. So it's dripping down onto his face. I once cross dressed for a day at school and asked to be called Edwina. <laughs> right, so, Edwina, mm-hmm. when, when was this? When was this cross-dressing day? This was primary, secondary? was year five right. primary school. And, and, and was it for a particular cause? Like, was it for a charity? Were you making a point? I can't really remember what the point of it was, to be honest, but basically they were like, guys, you're going to come in dressed in girls' clothes. Girls, you're going to come in <laughs> dressed in guys' clothes. We're going to swap clothes for the day. I feel like if this was true, I'd have seen this article in the Daily Mail, like the <laughs> frothing at the mouth, like outrage, like, you know. So you, what did you wear? And you, did you go for a dress to suit your figure, your petite figure? Or did you go for a skirt, something more conservative? I think I went for like a, a dress sort of number, a bit of jewellery on, uh, a wig. Jewellery? Jewellery? So you're, oh, you're putting in the effort. Yeah? Oh, the full shebang, yeah. A ring? Necklace. I think, yeah, just a necklace, a bit of jewellery, a little wig, maybe a hat. A wig? So you're you're a wig? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Heels on the scene? No, not heels. Not practical when you're trying to play football on the playground. Edwinio, True. As, I, as I call myself. <laughs> <on the page. laughs> So, I mean, your parents must have had a reaction of sorts to it. Like, I don't, I've never met them, so I don't know whether they're particularly liberal or not, but they must have been looking at this thinking, what's going on here? Like, this is, this is pretty, pretty Well, it was all just a bit of fun, wasn't it, really? It's all just a bit of fun and games, just, you know, guys coming dressed in girls' clothes, girls come in, wear a, a cap, mm. baseball cap and T-shirt, yeah. jeans, that kind of thing. One of my friends had a, when they were in primary school, their school had a Nazi day where you'd come in dressed as a Nazi and you'd learn about the Nazi regime what? and about their aims and their goals and how they went about it and what not. How to do the salute. How to grow a mini moustache, you know, across the, the bottom of your nose and whatnot. If we live in a world where uh, Nazi day is, mm. is a thing, then I'm not sure that dressing up, you know, being cross-dressing is, is your cross-dressing is maybe too ridiculous. It's definitely more, like, more ridiculous than dressing as a Nazi, obviously, I think, forcing kids to to experiment like that honestly the daily mail would have a field that i think parents wouldn't be parents wouldn't be up for that either would they parents wouldn't be up for that i'm gonna say it's a lie but i hope it's true you're saying it's a lie it's it a lie. is in fact true no <laughs> no no way no what? All, all the guys came in in like dresses or like female clothes yeah it's completely true yeah i was wearing like a little wig kind of thing like sort of um goldilocks type of wig i, I still i can't quite remember you have to ask maybe maybe my mum will remember but um i think she will yeah she probably will <laughs> to be honest but i can't quite remember why it was it might have been to, to raise money for a charity but it's nothing to do with gender or anything like that it wasn't anything to do with that i'm not sure why why that was specifically chosen i think it's just a bit of fun i think the I teachers took part said. as well i'm pretty sure the teachers oh. took part. yeah so the female <laughs> teachers were more dressed and more as guys. ridiculous i was thinking um during the week actually just because you mentioned the germans if you were a german guy in world war ii and yeah. nazi germany has taken over your country and let's say I'm Anne Frank, and I come knocking at your door. <laughs> Would you... What are you doing out and about? Are you meant to be in hiding? No, I'm sort of... I'm trying to get away. I've got the Nazis on my tail. Right? Oh, my God. And I'm now clicking the doorbell. Ding dong. My, my ding doorbell. dong. Yeah, your doorbell. Right. Yeah. You've got to open it, and I now I want to go in your loft. If you're a German uh, person yeah. in World War II, do you risk your own life and your family's mm. for the sake of Anne Frank and her family? Because she wants to come in there and use it like an Airbnb. Are you going to let her? <laughs> I don't know. I think what I'd have to do to put myself into that situation is have a bit of a role play now with you, okay. Anne Frank. Okay, I'll, I'll be Anne Frank. So, <clears throat> so I'm in the door. I'm cooking a bratwurst. Okay, is that a sausage? Um, it is a sausage. You know, us Germans, we live a sausage. So you're at my <laughs> door. You're on the run. Bam. Yeah, so I'm on the run. I'm a little bit out of breath. Right. <laughs> ding dong, ding dong. Doorbell. All right, I'm here. Bam. I open the door. It's not a squeak. I've got some WD-40. <laughs> no, it's a little bit, a little bit German, squeaky. German efficiency. It's a big house. Right, right. It's a big house. Old house. Right. So I open the door and I go, hello. H hello. Can I stay in your loft, please? Do you have any room? There's something, there's something funny, Anne. I'm I'm German. We've got no sense of humour. <laughs> so are you now? Are you the German person? Or are you you now? I'm German. Yeah, I'm German. Are you I'm German? Okay. Don't really Give me to the, accent. the accent. Yeah, I would like the yeah. accent, please. <laughs> yeah, is something <laughs> funny? <laughs> your accent is a little bit. Yeah. Can I can I stay in your loft, please? For what purpose? I've I've got the the Nazis. They they're coming for me and my my family. <laughs> I feel like I've had a dream about this one. Are you Martin Luther King? You know me, I'm a giving person, always on the right side of history. Mm. Get in my loft, please. So please you risk loft. your life and your family's life. The Germans come knocking yeah. round, right? I'm, I'm now the German army. I'm right. coming round now. So you're now, you're now a Nazi. Well, for the purpose of the sketch. Ding dong, ding dong. Not again. I'm never <laughs> going to finish this sausage. <laughs> right, I open the door once more. <laughs> Hello. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Yeah, we come in peace. I don't know what do they say. That's what an alien says. Yeah, that is it. What they don't exist. I was going to do that. The Nazis didn't do that, did they? It depends, doesn't it? Because hindsight's twenty twenty. Now we know the Nazis are bad. I do think though, like what didn't the they at the time? They didn't at the time. I don't think they. I don't think people knew at the time. Most people didn't. I bet they had a lot of popular support. But I don't know at what. I do draw the line at genocide. That is good of you. I draw it well before genocide. And it's about time you change your opinion on that as well. It's good of you. Not an advocate 
of genocide anymore. Not anymore. The light. Would I? I'd have been brainwashed. You know what I'm so, like. So you would you have know, turned down Anne Frank and we would to. never have her diaries ever again. Do you think the diaries are the biggest part of the, the story, though? Or maybe is, well, is it, surely it's her life. I mean, to be fair, what was she legacy? writing down? I don't know what she... What was she writing about? Because she wasn't I've doing never, much, was she? I've never, I've never read them personally. But I can honestly say she's probably staying at the same four walls every day. So well, that's probably what I'm get thinking. a bit saving. It's not like you're leaving the house and getting out and about, is it? Oh, I've been to Greg's, you know, well, this morning. <laughs> well, she can't, can she? She literally can't. She was in permanent lockdown for years. But I, mean, I don't think she was doing Zoom quizzes, though, do you? Joe Wicks. Joe Wicks in the morning. Wicks, though, <laughs> Joe Wicks in the morning. <laughs> Could you imagine? She'd struggle with that, though, wouldn't she? Oh, not in the face. You're making a racket and keep it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just bouncing oh. around the loft. <laughs> I don't think so. Very inappropriate, though. But yeah. I mean, I don't know what she was getting up to. It's obviously, and not a period of time I've really looked up. Yeah, how long was she in there for as well? Because it was years, wasn't it? Did she? Did she survive it? No, she died. Oh, but was yeah, she, she killed by the? Yeah, she was killed the in Nazi. a camp. Yeah, she she got found in the end. I'm pretty sure. I don't even know how it all happened. Was it? Were they behind a bookshelf or something? Or did they have a secret door? What? She I was mean, behind a bookshelf. No, one of those where you, was... you pull up, you pull, you pull a book out, and the yeah, and it just opens. turns around as he's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. That, no, that's it, what it was. It's quite pioneering for the nineteen forties, though. Well, obviously, I don't buy it when you learn about it in school, and people are like, people got behind the Nazis because they they had designer outfits. Hugo Boss. Surely it runs deeper. Hugo, Hugo Boss. Yeah, exactly. Joe Lysa. Surely oh. it runs deeper than that, though. Yeah, I'm I mean... not just thinking. You know, they look they look good in all black, and as much as I love a man in uniform. I'm not being drawn into killing people just because they wear fetching black suits and they have the whole armband thing going on. They were really. But you would have you would have let Anne Frank die. That is what you're saying. Well, she died anyway. Well, um, she did, but she had day. four years of, of great life in that loft. I'm thinking. I'm thinking self preservation. I'm thinking. I'm maybe I'm being drawn in by the uniforms. Definitely by the propaganda. By my <laughs> German pride. So you're really getting into the character here, aren't you? You're really getting into the mindset. Well, even, I dabbled. I dabbled with the accent as well, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you're taking um, it as, as, as you know, as a serious character here. Exactly, but they did end up losing as well. It's important to remember. I feel like people forget that. <laughs> Do they forget that? <laughs> yeah, I got egged. Now, was it a targeted attack? Who's to say? Was I targeted for being too bloody fashionable? I don't know. You don't see enough female murderers. If I'm guilty of anything. It's of giving all that I have to help children all over the world. Oh, aren't you good? Aren't you? Oh, such a good guy. It is of loving children of all ages and races. Well, you probably don't want to say that, Michael, not with the allegations. You may be better off just chucking your kid in, in the sea, in a lake, in a river. There was some like e-fit that was developed by the police, and it was basically an egg with side partings. <laughs> and that's what it was. It was literally a circle with some hair on top. We got an e-fit, guys. This is the person who stole your child. <laughs> egg. It's just an egg. <laughs> Welcome to hell. You want to be left in, in a coffin underground? Yeah, with all my bling on. Like, uh, who was it that was buried in all the bling? Who was it? Savile? <laughs> actually, <Who was>? <laughs> actually, I want to be cremated. <laughs> I probably will end up giving my body to science. Just have it. Have me. Take my organs. You don't want the eyes, though. You don't want the... Don't bother with the eyes. Imagine giving someone Useless. my eyes. Because you're going to end up with a, a spec saver subscription. Do you know what I mean, like, don't you don't want that? Given some They're a lovely, like, like deep shade of blue, though. Thank you, a... thank you. I mean, the green, but thank you. But <laughs> you know, aside aside from that, I live next to a graveyard. Okay, and so we see them regularly, dig people up, chuck them out, whatever, put them back oh, in again. God. Put, put the body in so what they'll do is they'll put like a, like a protective sort of thing round whilst they get cracking on with it like digging the hole and all that oh there's another local there's another local it's quite a small <laughs> village as well so you sort of you might know a few of them who knows and when they get to a point where they run out of space you got to dig a few of them up rearrange you got a little rearrange of it you when that's gets, what they do when it gets a bit cluttered like being at home when you when your house gets a bit cluttered i clear out get rid of the <laughs> trash get rid of the old stuff in with the new stuff. I remember Molly May once trended because she didn't speak about Israel and Palestine. Uh, so her fans were not happy. She didn't do a post about it on her Instagram story. Like, I don't know yeah. if I want Molly May's opinion on Israel and Palestine. She's from Love Island. Like, is that a specialist subject? If she was a mastermind, would she go on there and do Israel and Palestine as the topic? <laughs> Probably not. Keep it shut then. Get your own place. Get your own pad. And when you do get your own pad, decorate it, but don't decorate it too much. You don't want it to look like a drugs den. 
I mean, like you're just a mattress on the floor, a bit tatty, whatever, needles everywhere. Wrappers everywhere and bottles. Dead bodies, crack oh, pipe. Crack pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Have a clear up. <laughs> clear up the bodies. Clear Put up the heroin needles. away. Exactly. Put the heroin in the drawer. Other ways to get girls, um, be an environmentalist. Be big on that. They love mm. that. Okay. Mm. Start buying secondhand clothes. Start planting trees. Go vegan. Whatever you have to do, do it. Okay. Be an environmentalist. Love animals. And they will love you. That's how it works. Go to a few rallies, maybe. Strap yourself maybe. to a bridge. And maybe create conversation with someone else that strapped themselves to a bridge. And before well, you know it, you blossom a lovely little relationship there. A sustainable relationship with no kids, though. So you don't want to pollute the, uh, down definitely the line. Definitely sustainable. But definitely sustainable. Girls go wild for a man that can make a spag bowl. Okay? If you can make a spag <laughs> bowl... <laughs> If you can make a spag bowl, you're already in the top 1% of men, okay? Male standards are on the floor at this point. They're on the floor. Learn how to drive, okay? <laughs> Women love a man with a car. They love a man with a car. It's sexy having your hand on a gear stick, okay? Buy a manual. Changing gears is hot. That's what my market research says. They love changing gears, Okay. Buy a car. It shows it shows assertiveness. I'm driving you to the to the date. I'm picking you up. Some people even buy cars as love making machines. They drive out to a forest and next minute, you know, dogging. You mean dogging? Well, some people call love, that. Some love people, making machines. Some you people in relationships do it. Don't be yourself. This is why you're single. Stop being yourself. Let's make <laughs> you a warped version of yourself. Okay. Hmm. Let's try and project a different version of yourself to begin with. Then further down the line, when she's in too deep, then you can start to fart in front of her, you know, well, um, well, eat in bed like some sort of farmer animal. You can start going to your UKIP rallies, become anti-vax, <laughs> all those sort of things, you know. That's when you can unload that because it gets to a point where you're in so deep that she can't say, she can't dump you now. She's scared of the yeah. loneliness. So I would say they, she's sticking with you. You were at a um, far right rally and she's going, well, so be it. He has hobbies. What are you up to at the moment, Jimmy? Not getting caught. That was his response. <laughs> Not getting caught. Clear Don't waste. recycle. Don't <laughs> stop recycling. Well, president's dead. They've got a policeman dead as well. But we do have his killer. So exactly. you're still thinking about the bad news, aren't you? <laughs> I've never loved somebody so much that I think if they got assassinated and they brain and up all over the car that I'd be there, scoop. She scoops them and tries putting them back in. She does. Well, well that's, no, no. That's no. what happens in, in the in the thrill of the moment, I guess. You know, when you're in the heat <laughs> of the moment and your husband's head's been blown off. That's what you do though, isn't it? You sort of have that moment of like you just go into sort of panic mode. Of like, oh, quick, we've got to put him back together again. Quick, get the brains. And it's like, Humpty Dumpty. Whoa, Jackie, come Humpty on, this Dumpty. isn't Humpty Dumpty, is it? You know what I mean, <laughs> we can't put him back together again. David Attenborough is overrated. This is a borderline offensive. I'm, I'm walking out. It's okay to dump someone by text. That is controversial, is that? Bundy uses books to simulate his body in a bed under a blanket and climb to this crawl space. It takes them 17 hours. <laughs> Nearly a day. Nearly a day they're thinking, that looks like Ted under those sheets. Those books, that looks like Ted. Ah, Ted, under those sheets. Why is he not moving? Why is he not moving? <laughs> but... not even breathing. There's no, like, moving <laughs> of the body or anything. It's just... Goes around asking girls that they want to hold his penis. Oh, we all do that. You, you want him behind bars? Do we get an exclusive there? You get want him, him behind, locked like, up? Dom Littlewood, get him locked up. <laughs> I've not got tolerance, really, for anyone under the age of five, six. Why should okay. you? Pain in the ass, aren't they? One is the loneliest number that there are. I don't know the words. Went to a fancy dress party. Dressed as a clown. <laughs> Go on. I'm looking at adults. That's makes not a change. Looking. I prefer to focus on their soul. That's what I prefer. <laughs> Stand like a dementor. If you're a 40-year-old listening to this and you're sleeping with a 20-year-old, there's nothing wrong with that. Ooh, I see cancelled. I promise I'm not, I'm not drunk this week. I'm just, just happy. Well, you see it. A bit tipsy. I'm getting, I'm getting the, the word. word. <laughs> Nonce. And guns as well. It's an interesting one. Because you usually think of that lot loving guns in America, don't you? But he didn't, wasn't a fan of the guns. Yeah, he took them all away. And that's where he lost a few people on that. He did. He, he, he did. lost me. I'm all right on everything else. You've lost he me at did. the guns, though. You've lost me. I made me a there. note of that underage marriage. All statuary, for it. Statuary, statuary rape is okay, but I draw the line when he takes my shotgun away. Mm, yeah. Kevin Spacey was a bit different, wasn't he? He, <laughs> he was a bit different in a way. I, mean, I just I think, think the idea of the person that I'm going to spend my life with 
is doing something, walking this earth, God knows where, God knows who, God knows what they're doing. Right, for nothing, nothing to risk. Learning Living how that, to read, probably. Now that, <laughs> learning how to read and write. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there being posse trained as we speak. How weird is that? <laughs> Stabilizers on. <laughs> I've actually written some of my own songs. I was curious to hear your yeah. thoughts on, uh, mm. on my. So I'm so curious. I've got like a Christmas yeah. one, but it's sort of like got hints of <laughs> politics in there. So it's a bit. Oh, like, God. Christmas is Thanks. not about Thanks. presents or a full mm. tummy. Mm-mm. Got very few things on my list this year. Just give me money. Oh, and then it's sort of so again. It's like consumerism. Do you know what I mean? Don't ex- I said don't explain it to me. I I want to get it. Well, that's, I get it. Yeah, I'm just saying that. That's no, like, don't consumer. say that. You can't. Yeah, but where you can't do that on Spotify, can you? Are you going to have like a director's commentary? No, but I'm just saying. Cutting, he's got so. nothing on his list this year. But just give me yeah. money. Do you know what I mean? So it's a commentary. A no, I get commentary. it. I, I get don't want it. presents. I want money, please. It's not got that many layers. Boats doing donuts in the tent yeah, and just, stuff. I'm I was like, just, this is getting ridiculous now. Whole street doing the conga. And it was just like, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. You had COVID. What, you, know, you had a bad you know, Ventilator. Me. Headache. Three days. Headache, this babe. was bad Some yeah. people just built different love. <laughs> Have a load of that. I had no idea who David Icke was before he came on the really? podcast. But we got in a bit of trouble for bringing for bringing him to the studio. They referred to him as an as a quote extremist, an extremist in a cardigan. Exactly. I'm all for it. <laughs> More extremists should wear cardigans. Person at uni though that did go to sex parties hosted by her own dad when she was what? sixteen. Hosted by her own dad. One of the most interesting people I met at uni was somebody that in their freshers year joined Kink Society, where they teach Tossed. you how to safely tie ropes for the purposes of like bdsm but you need it's like how to tie knots and stuff how, you in scouts how to well, they probably do they basically think <laughs> societies anyway aren't they scouts really from yeah. what i've from what i've heard Ran by pervs <laughs> stop wasting time with good looking people they have the personality of a tree trunk but it's okay to dine and dash wow okay oh. don't bother going to uni just get kidnapped for a couple of months break out of it netflix show ding dong you said he was pulling up my top oh my god Oh my God. And seeing if I had abs or not as a way of determining as to whether she should get with me, kind of thing. And the <laughs> next minute, you end up getting a taxi back with this guy, just yeah. going back. Did you meet the meet the family? I had a bit of a lie in and chatted. We got along well and uh, met the dogs and, and the, the parents were on the scene as well. But it's what are the parents team. thinking here? The queen is dead, and that is the big breaking news. I'd like to just read out a little poem uh, to kick us off. <laughs> From my favourite poet, uh, Ryan Giggs. No, not Ryan Giggs. <laughs> from my favourite poet, <laughs> Helen Lowry Marshall. Oh, I love her, to be fair. I'd like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave when life is done. Isn't that lovely? Now I've got the Queen on Naked Attraction now. <laughs> That's what I've got. 100% through leaked text messages between Charles and Camilla, where Charles so, says, Camilla, I wish be... I were your tampon. This week I have some very sad news for you. Toby isn't joining us uh, this week. Um, he has been suspended from the podcast uh, as a result of uh, last week's inappropriate dress wear for the occasion. You should not have kids on planes. It should be an 18 plus environment. Okay. I'm not saying stripping, lap dancing. If you want to do that, maybe that's like an extra, an in flight extra you can pay for, whatever, right? Being around the Eiffel Tower, I felt like a bit of a perv. I know everyone else is queued, but he has queued. And he's David Beckham. This is David Beckham we're talking about here. I know everyone else is in a queue. I don't care about normal people. Forget about them. Forget them. He is better than most people, let's face it, okay? He's better than your average person. And yet he's got in a queue for 12 hours? I don't care about Doris. Don't care about Doris. She's 85. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care she's in the queue as well. David Beckham here? Eh? What's she ever done? Oh, I fought in a war. You didn't fight in a war. You're 85, for God's sake. <sighs> But no, David Beckham, absolute legend. What a bloody legend he is. Oh, and he looks good. I don't know whether the fancy dress thing was necessary. Don't, you know, don't dress up as a Peaky Blinder. It's a bit inappropriate, I'd say. But again, each to their own. You know, if I turned up there dressed as Ali G, people call that disrespectful. 
as he dresses up as a Peaky Blinder and everyone goes, oh, he looks great, doesn't he? I'm like, what? God save the king. <laughs> 57% of Tinder messages end after one message. Delete it, get a personality, put the gecko away. They always have a pet gecko, these people. <laughs> A long beard and a pet gecko. You know the sorts. The quiet guy always seems to get the fit blonde girl in these movies. We do. But you do. <laughs> in the movies. In the oh, movies. Right, I quite like a gay baby. <laughs> but I think there are things you can do. You know, I think know a drug dealer. I think that's a great way of being popular. <laughs> Nobody has ever told me an interesting, invigorating story that started with when I was playing on my Xbox. I've got lots of great memories of playing on my Xbox, thank you very much. Abusing 13-year-old American kids. On they the were nine. <laughs> In order to be popular, I think you've got to pollute the planet, eat meat. <laughs> I think you've got to it, it, take it, it, planes, not trains. Because I was thinking about this. Do you know any popular environmentalists? Do you know a popular vegan? And you can say it because you've got a shirt on that's full of fruit and veg. Exactly, I've won them over with this. They think you're an ally and then bam, sucker punch. This is a vegan top. Injury. But this is the thing, you talk, you talk to environmentalists, you go, oh yeah, I was just, uh, I was out in Bali. To the environmentalists. Yeah, we're going straight back there. I'm not finished slagging them off. There is too much discourse, particularly amongst men, around steak. How do you like your steak? Oh, I like it. Well done. What well, you like it? Well done. Well, it's basically burnt at that point. There's no way of pleasing anybody. And it's something I witnessed at uni a lot. Why are people so hung up about how other people have their steak cooked? You've been surrounded by too many Southerners, okay? Because I've <laughs> never had that conversation with anybody in a trillion years, okay? I tell you what, I hate phone calls. Sometimes I'll write a script in a, in a Word document. Do you, have you ever done That's this? What? No. What? Let's do a little role play, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're a doctor. God. Calling me up about my breast cancer. Brr, brr. Hello. Hello, Mr. Chapman. Uh, it's Dr. Hurst. I'm calling from the GP surgery. You made an appointment with us regarding your, your breast cancer. Oh, yes. <laughs> so Are you well? Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, it's, uh, it's bad news, unfortunately. This is a very special episode. This week, we're going to be talking about how famous I've just become. I think it's been on like six different continents now. Out of the set. It's only only continent that's not been on is Antarctica. I think you've played a blinder. Because <laughs> just adjust the glove there, just adjust the glove. I'm trying to take it off. You're getting a bit sweaty in there. It Imagine is. It's getting a bit sweaty. <laughs> a bit clammy. I France, do find it funny Kenya. seeing the picture of you alongside Greek kind of headlines going on, being like, "What is like? What is? What is the world?" Has he murdered to... somebody? Why is he? Is, he... Yeah. <laughs> is this a tourist or something? <laughs> Some kind of rampage in Iron Apple or something like that? Like, what's going on? Hey guys, and welcome back. This sure, week... shut it, shut it. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> have you been on TV? That's the question I got for you. No, you haven't. Okay, I have. Right, crime Watch. Crime Watch. Well, I don't know if that counts. I'm not they sure. They didn't identify me, so I got away with it. Yeah, it lucky really, you. Really count. But I have been on TV, which automatically makes me famous and therefore more important. Okay, <laughs> we all know this. So I now have special rights as a celebrity. Uh, I can avoid taxes, fiddle kids, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and <laughs> what? Nobody's going to take that out of context, are they? What? Surely not. Surely no. not. No, I'm not going you, to do those things. Are I'm you referencing any, any particular celebrities you know, that you might want to out at this point? Because obviously I know that you guys in showbiz, there's a yep. lot of showbiz secrets. <clears throat> so if you are willing to come forward with, with any names of any potential pedos, then... Uh, and do let us know. All I'll say is, I now view Little Britain differently. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> You're there in the shower naked. I yeah. am the one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine going through Margaret Thatcher's knicker drawer upstairs. You know when they sneak <laughs> up upstairs and come dine with me. Hello, welcome to episode 53 of Two Pals on a Pod. As you have seen, we've got our best bits that you've just watched there. Um, hopefully you enjoyed them. If you didn't, then, you know, why have you got this far? To be honest, but we thought it's we'd off. do <laughs> we thought we'd do a little sort of ending uh, to this episode, just going through some of our favorite episodes, favorite moments, and also telling you what's to come as well with this podcast going into the next year. Because I mean, an entire year of podcasts. I mean, it's gone quick. I don't know about you. It's flown by. It's not only has it flown by as well. We have kind of when we set when we set out doing the podcast, we didn't really want to pigeonhole ourselves in any kind of specific subject area, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Which means that we have covered topics from the sublime to the ridiculous from the, the serious to the not so serious which i think is a great virtue to have isn't it yeah i think it is we've, we've definitely i mean people say you should niche down into one thing we've gone against the grain on that we have gone we're going to talk about everything and anything and we're going to continue to do that because that's what we like to do we've got lots of different interests why not talk about lots of different things yeah, imagine letting everybody get through the best bits and then going 
And this will be the final episode of the podcast. Uh, I can't be asked anymore. Yeah, yeah no, we've given up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bored of it, bored of it. But no, I think my my personal favorite. We're talking about favorite episodes. I really do like the, the the serious ones, the ones where we can impart with actual kind of useful information, and the ones where we have those kind of more more vulnerable chats. So the episodes that stand out when I think about our repertoire, if that's what it is, mm. uh, the the mental health kind of struggles episode that we you know we spoke kind of candidly i think about both of our respective experiences and how we dealt with those kind of and it's i think it's vital that if you go through something like that to impart that wisdom after and that kind of perspective so that one i think the how to get through uni one was fun for me having mm-hmm. just gotten through uni so a lot of relevant advice even if it changes just even if just one person takes on one solitary piece of advice and of course the, the growing up gay one where you came out yep that was that was, all, that episode was just about me actually that one <laughs> but no, I, I agree that was an episode that i thought about as well i was like oh yeah that was, that was quite a good episode actually i liked that one i did also i've got quite a few listed to be honest i was going through i was like oh i liked this one i liked that one the psychopath next door episode three yeah, that's one of my favorites. I put a big clip in that as people will have listened uh, yeah. if they've got this far. Uh, I really enjoyed that episode. It was just so out of the blue, like I'd not heard the story before. No. Uh, that, that guy standing in the middle of the street being like, I put a Impressive. roof over your head and a cock up your ass. That's a great quote. Stick that on a t shirt. <laughs> let's get some, let's get some merch going. No, I've, got that, I've got that on my, my list as well when I was going through the episode. I think that was episode, it was either two or three, one of the first ones we, we've yeah. done. And that story is a cracking story. If it's in this this episode, people will just listen to it, so I won't go over mm-hmm. it again. But I mean, you talk about people having unique uni experiences, but that is is that's ridiculous. So and Ted Bundy as well, I like the Ted Bundy podcast, even though it's obviously horrific, the story of people dying. I did like that podcast. I enjoyed the sort of researching it, finding out more about it. Because I didn't really know a lot about him. I just knew of Ted Bundy and that he killed yeah. people, but then find out sort of nitty gritty details, how he escaped prison and that kind of thing. Horrifically uh, gripping, wasn't it? And that, I think yeah. that's the one where, where obviously we have these episodes where we talk about real life events, which requires a little bit of research, a smidgen of research before, yeah. before recording the podcast. Just a little bit. Just a bit. And uh, that was one for me where I was like, I was reading about it. I was like, this is never ending. Just when you think it's ending, oh, you're going to catch him now. He breaks out of prison and then goes, you know, Completely across America. I think he basically traveled across America. You know, I think and well, backpackers books. that are jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Used books though, didn't he, to just to make it look like it was him in the bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that. I, I think was, that, was, that was classic. He used every single mode of transport possible, and I think passed through every single U.S. state possible. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was one for me. And also, I think people do forget actually that we solved the Madeleine McCann case definitively because when we we ended in the conclusion that it was the german nonce that did this basically and the police now seem to be following our lead and i think he's just been charged not for uh, offenses relating to madeline herself but for uh, a couple of other child sex offenses mm-hmm. so uh we solved that thank us later i another one that also <laughs> sprang to mind to me was I mean, diana i like the diana one so that was a good episode because yeah, like we it. have different opinions on that one and so that mm-hmm. was quite a good one where we we're sort of sharing ideas around that the prince andrew one and epstein so that, much to go off with that case and and i think it it's obviously ongoing I and mean, i don't think it's it's got to a conclusion that many people like as he doesn't been even in court mm-hmm. so that's one that, that we could potentially return to maybe one day as well you know, looking forward to the, to the future. I did enjoy victim blaming all the uh, people that got swindled by the Tinder swindler, where we just rocked up and we were like, how could you not know? How could you not know what Speak was going on Speak for yourself. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't. I was on the side of I the remember, victims. I remember recording that. I was making notes of it. I was writing notes out. And I remember thinking, I've just got to tone it down a bit. So I sat there, I was watching, I was like, how did you not guess from, you know... This guy is literally living multiple lives, jetting around the world, swindling multiple women at the same time, and then asking for big wads of cash. Can you just sell me some more money? I know I've not paid back the previous amount, but can you just sell me some more? <laughs> I know you've just sent me a hundred grand, but I've burnt through it. So yeah, so there was there was uh there was that and the JFK episode as well, I thought was quite fun. Yeah, that the JFK I had that one down as well. It was, it was this summer, wasn't it? We were recording it and uh I think it was one of the episodes where you go to a conspiracy and you think, oh, I'm not sure I don't know about it. And then you side with the the idea that it was actually a conspiracy and there's a few things that don't end up with your discrepancies there. So many details of that one that were really interesting, like the guy behind the fence and all that kind of thing. It was like people saying they saw a puff of smoke and was there how many shooters were there and all this kind of thing. It was well, I really felt like we got somewhere by the end of the podcast with that one. We 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 did about it at school in A level history and they would, you know, uh, watched a Zapruder film in 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 class and treated it as gospel. And then the more you look into it, the more you think, Oh, it's been tampered with. They tampered with the the evidence, which is obviously not not 
good practice now, is it? It's not ideal. Maybe there's maybe there is something to hide. Like there are cans all over the place. If you're, <laughs> if you're, just with less tapas, uh, <laughs> you know. But if you're editing, if you're editing, if you're editing uh, your, your clips or whatever, there is there is uh, no smoke without fire. I quite liked the Queen is Dead one. I thought that was just a nice. <laughs> no, I thought it was a nice podcast. You know, I I dressed up. You didn't. You were disrespectful, whatever. But I was really. Shall we eat? Really respectful, and you weren't. I think we should tell the in, in in the interest of transparency, we should tell the full story behind that podcast, which is we plan to record on the <laughs> was it was it the night of the, the the day that the Queen died or something, and I was too emotional to. <laughs> I didn't even want to joke about it. I couldn't bring myself to joke about it. I was in such a state. Was, for some reason, that hit me like a like I wasn't exactly unexpected. It just hit me like a car. I was like, no, I'm not recording. Well, this, recording. this is the thing. So we had a break in our communication and we don't really have like many, I guess it wasn't, wasn't an argument. wasn't an argument really. No, 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 we no, just no. like didn't communicate ourselves properly. So I, I thought you were being sarcastic when you were saying <laughs> that you weren't ready to record the podcast. And I was like, yeah, me neither. I'm, I'm struggling <laughs> with that. And then it came to the time and I was there just like on a zoom call waiting for you. And you were like, no, 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 I'm, I'm actually no, not I'm ready deadly. to film. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I, I, did, I completely yeah. like not realised that you were being serious since we had to... I think we filmed the next day, didn't we? I think you got it was, over yeah, it, it was the, the next afternoon, wasn't it? it was, yeah, you got uh, over it quick. I, I, well, what can I say? I'm a crocodile absolute, tears, I think. Absolute, absolute mission. Just give me the knighthood, man. Just give me the knighthood. <laughs> I'm out here. I'm out here batting for the, for the royal family on there. So just give me the knighthood. It's what David Beckham's doing. It's the only reason he queued, yeah. he queued for 12 hours. As for uh, for the night, but yeah, no, you thought I was being sarcastic, but I was in no mood. I think I was just scrolling down Twitter and people were making jokes about it, and I was like, "You are reprehensible, <laughs> you lot." Uh, so yeah, so I didn't didn't actually uh, want to record on that night. Interestingly enough, another one I enjoyed was how to get girls. I thought that was a good podcast. I liked that one just because giving our wisdom, our advice uh, for you know how to get girls, as as the name suggests, which obviously you know we both have a lot of experience in. The how-to kind of series of podcasts that we've done, I think, are always quite fun because you do have to get, as, 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 as somebody that's doing the podcast, you have to get quite creative with your suggestions, don't you? With the how to be cool, how to get girls, even how to do uni to an extent, and the, even the life hacks that we did but last week. That was last week, wasn't it? Yeah. With the life hacks. It's, uh, it allows you to, to put a more personal touch to a podcast instead of, you know, if you're talking about something that objectively happened, a historical event, it's not really much kind of personal wisdom that you can impart with. So the how-to kind of angle that we take or have been taking recently are really quite fun because you can share personal tips. Yeah, and it gives you a lot more creative freedom as well. You can go down with sort of rabbit holes with it. And we are going to continue to do those how-to podcasts as well going into the next 12 months. Uh, we've got some other ideas uh, for that coming up. Do you have any particular like standout favourite moments from any of the episodes? I, I'm, I was mentioning to you before we filmed like the Anne Frank role play in yeah, episode just- 18. I completely, completely forgot about that because that was episode 18, wasn't it? But that was the, the original pilot that we did before doing the first episode as, a, as every pilot mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. You know, yes, you know, that's how pilot episodes work. Uh, I just remember thinking, just uh, I was recording that while I was at uni, so I just remember thinking, I'm doing this Anne Frank role play here where one of us is a German officer knocking on Anne Frank's door, one of us is Anne Frank. I remember thinking, what the fuck are my housemates going to think of this? You know, <laughs> it's probably the only time, like when I, when I record... I'm kind of in my own bubble anyway, so I'm not really wondering, oh, what if somebody overhears this or this or this? I'm not really thinking about that, but that's the only time I can feasibly think, if they overhear me here, it's probably just because it was the first one I'd ever done. I was like, if they, overthink, if they overhear me here, what am I? What are they going to think of me? What are they going to think of me doing this? But I did, in terms of specific moments, we've already spoken about it, but the psychopath story itself, mm-hmm. for me, is it's an absolute it's an absolute corker and i'm still you know obviously in touch with everybody that was involved not the not the psychopath and not his ex-girlfriend oh, no, whose no. blood you've, was... got, you've got ties with him now <laughs> you, tried, you tried to work through it and it's good and <laughs> we clashed we were too similar you know, <laughs> you know i'm not in touch with the with the with the ex-boyfriend and the ex-girlfriend as well whose blood is smeared all over the walls but my housemates obviously i am in touch with and sometimes we just remember like do you remember that happening? Where we were just, me and, me and my housemate were on the sofa watching The Breakfast Club, still never seen the end of it. And we hear screaming, and then suddenly we go around, we go, what's going on here? They get the load down, and police turn up. Then they go, and then the guy turns up. All right, God, I'm recounting again. But that's my favourite story to tell, even in everyday life. So telling it on here was a, was a giggle. 
And I think another one for me that, that stood out was it wasn't actually that long ago, I don't think. And you were you were saying you were making quite a serious point. You were like, it's weird to think, you know, what my future partner's doing right now. And I was like <laughs> learning to read and write. <laughs> and that one I think was one of the big things we of, had, I think. It's it's one of the uh one of the running jokes, isn't it? I suppose that we yeah. have on, on here and in real life as well. Mm-hmm. There's a completely fictional kind of idea that I have a fixation with. <laughs> Just to clarify, I'm not a not an honest. But not I think on, on a more on a more serious note, the, the the one that I enjoyed, I think, reflecting on the most, because I think it was a mutual reflection that we we're doing when we did the uh, how the pandemic changed us episode, which is uh, the thumbnails got that horrible photo of Matt Hancock on snogging, you know, oh, yeah, the technique. Yeah. That one, that was interesting to do. I think for both of us, because over the the, the course of the pandemic itself, we grew closer because of the lockdown and because of the things that were going on around that we dm each other about that and about but by virtue of having more time on our hands in lockdown and also the fact mm-hmm. that there's more, there's more going on with the lockdown itself and the vaccine and you know we're talking about things like that and things that were going on it was nice to debrief after two years of staying in touch and growing closer because of that it was nice to sit down and kind of reflect upon the past two years i think i really enjoyed yeah. that one that's a good conversation. Yeah, I think we, we have had a good a, a good couple of those sort of conversations now on the podcast, which are, which are pretty good. And we'll, I'm sure we'll probably do some more because there's still a couple of other things that you could probably talk about, I think, that I've probably not spoken about on the podcast before. Yeah. Um, so we can definitely do those sorts, of, those sorts of podcasts in like the next 12 months, I reckon. Uh, but I'm trying to think now, like where we started the podcast, um, things have changed so much. We aren't going to do like an end of year review, so we won't go too much over that, but things have changed so much in that year. And I think we've both got a lot better at doing this than where we first started as well. And you've improved so, so much because obviously you've got to bear in mind that mm. you'd never really filmed, you've never filmed the video before and video, no. podcasts are long videos. So, you know, this was your first time doing that kind of thing. And, you know, the amount of erms you used to do and that kind of yeah, thing. And now it's completely different. I don't yeah. have to edit them out like 50, 60 times <laughs> episode and it's very noticeable and so you've changed you've improved the way you speak and you know the, ep- the episodes i feel like have got better as we've gone on it, it got to the point didn't it where i would sit with there's a piece of paper behind my screen and i just put um in a speech bubble and then a big red cross over it just to remind myself not to say because it's like a natural if you're faced with a question or you're thinking about what you're about to say it's natural to put that filler so you don't have no silence don't want any silence so you fill it with the um and then you start you start thinking but it's important as well to to pick up skills that come in handy in everyday life like if you're conducting that if you're online interviews for jobs whatever you sound like a much more articulate person who's in control of what they're thinking if you cut out those fuller sounds mm-hmm. and if you're if you're if you're quite experienced in doing something like this it doesn't become weird that you're talking to a webcam it just becomes completely normal and i think it's important as well I think we, we've spoken about before the importance of routine in general in everyday life. on podcast. And you, so you talk about how things have changed for you. You've moved completely in terms of locations. Yep. Uh, well, there's, there's an um, ironically, <laughs> ironic, cut that out, cut that out. It was always um, going to happen. <laughs> and I've, you know, in terms of uh, uni, finished now. But it's important, isn't it, to have that constant, to have that recording this podcast every week is nice because even though change is good and change is positive, you want to keep the, the familiarity of that routine and mm-hmm. it helps us touch bases with each other as well. I think that, and, and obviously when you get to the, to, the, to the year mark as we have, and it's nice to just to look back and go, this is how far we've come. So I think it's important to have that routine, that reflection. Yeah, definitely. And I think going into the next 12 months, our, some of our future podcast episodes that we're going to be doing, we've just been planning them before coming on. And we've got like the missing uh, Malaysia Airlines flight. We're going to be doing that. So there's lots of like conspiracies around that, theories around that. Uh, we've got, we're going to be doing one on OJ Simpson. Aren't yeah. we? We're doing one on that. We're we'll doing one on uh, R. Kelly, who I called, I got confused with Nelly, <laughs> didn't I? Which is, uh, is libelous. <laughs> but you know, if they, yeah, that, that'll just... be a good one as well. There is just an endless stream of podcast topics out there. Don't start your own, though, if you're listening. Though. No. We don't need even more competition. No, thanks. But there's an endless stream of topics, both funny, ha-ha topics, and both factual, kind of historical, deep dives, and interesting, in genuinely interesting kind of situations. And, of course, we're going for a psychic reading. Yes, we will year. be. We're gonna, we've got to get that penciled in. I've we spoken to, it into sure. existence now, so now <laughs> it has to happen because now we've committed to to doing it. And a little debrief after that on uh, 
and what the what the psychic said to us and how much BS it was. And you know, maybe it's true actually. You know, I won't go into it with the blinkered perspective. Yeah, I think I'll be really interesting. Looking forward to doing that. Uh, I think in the future, and yeah, I'm sure there'll be lots of other things as well. Like Netflix shows. We'll be doing some more how tos, all those kind of things, uh, which I think is really exciting. But thank you to everybody for their support over the last year. It's been pretty incredible. Thanks to everyone for coming along for the ride. Thanks to everyone who released comments and downloads every week. They're still going strong, so we really do appreciate that. Yeah, the the comments in particular are always interesting. It's always nice to hear feedback, pos- mm-hmm. positive feedback. Anyway, it's always nice to 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 uh, to, to read that because I when when we're recording this, or I, you may be in touch with it more than I am. I am recording, and I don't really think of oh, there are actually going to be people listening to this. And then the the podcast goes out, and then people comment on it, and then you think, oh yeah, there there are people actually listening to 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 the the chats that we're having, and the, the feedback and the comments are always overwhelmingly positive. So it's lovely. It's warm, warm my heart. It does. Yeah, we appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much for your support over the last year and uh, hopefully for another successful year going forward. Fingers Fingers crossed. crossed. Fingers crossed, both professionally and personally. Let's hope so. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you very much.